ويتهم يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد Respected ulama, my respected elders, my brothers, and my little ones, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. After praising the Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and sending salutations on Nabiya Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I begin as always by first thanking you, my host, for giving me this opportunity to convey the message of Allah and His Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And I pray to the Almighty Allah that Allah accepts these efforts of yours in listening to this message. As I pray to the Almighty Allah that Allah accepts these efforts of mine in delivering this message. Our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, He said, إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَنظُرُ إِلَىٰ صُوَرِكُمْ وَلَكِنْ يَنظُرُ إِلَىٰ قُلُوبِكُمْ وَعَمَالِكُمْ that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't look at your faces. How handsome you are, who you are, what you are, where you come from. Whether you are a Gujarati, whether you're a Pakistani, whether you're a Bengali, whether you're an Arab or whether you're a non-Arab, whether you are black, blue or green, this is not the criteria for perfection. وَلَكِنْ يَنظُرُ إِلَىٰ قُلُوبِكُمْ وَعَمَالِكُمْ إِنَّ أَكْرَمَكُمْ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ أَتْقَاكُمْ In the eyes of Allah, the criteria for perfection is this. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala looks inside your hearts. The purer the heart, the whiter the heart, the more dear this individual is to the Almighty Allah, the more this individual is loved by Allah, and the more his ranks are elevated in paradise. Look at Sayyidina Bilal Habshi radiallahu ta'ala an. What was the status of Sayyidina Bilal Habshi radiallahu ta'ala anhu in the days of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the eyes of the kuffar? They would persecute him by day and night. Why? Because the kuffar believed that this person has no value, he's worthless. There will, not, there will be nobody to come to his rescue. And they would beat him by day and by night. To them, all he was, was an Ethiopian slave. Who they could treat as they pleased. Yet that very Ethiopian slave in the eyes of Allah and his Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And in spite of the fact that he was from Habasha and had black skin. Such was the status of the Ethiopian slave in the eyes of Allah and his Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That when Mecca was conquered. And Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam returned as a conqueror, as a fatih in Mecca al Mukarramah. And it was an absolute awesome gathering in which all the believers and non believers were present. And the Quraysh were there. And the likes of Abu Bakr, Umar, Usman, Ali, Talha, Zabar, Sa'ad, Sa'id were all present. And it was time for prayer. This Habshi slave, radiallahu ta'ala an, may Allah be pleased with him, was the one that was called. And in this awesome gathering, he was the one that climbed the most holiest sight of the believers. And he did this with his black skin. And he climbed the house of Allah. 
And he was the one that received the honor of calling to prayer on that day, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. That Allah is the greatest, Allah is the greatest. Not just restricted to this. The same Bilal, our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa said, narrated by Sayyidina Jabir radiallahu ta'ala an, that I was shown paradise and the blessings of paradise. And whilst I was inside paradise, I saw the wife of Abu Talha radiallahu ta'ala an. And after this, all of a sudden, I could hear footsteps in paradise. Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, it turned out to be Sayyidina Bilal Habshi radiallahu ta'ala an. He was walking in front of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in paradise. What was the status of Sayyidina Salman al-Farsi radiallahu ta'ala an? You know, in the days where racial pride was such amongst the Arabs, that it used to flow in their veins, and they used to kill one another and go to war as a result of this for years and years on end. What could have been the status of Sayyidina Salman al-Farsi amongst the Arabs? Ya yeah, in the eyes of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the Prophet of Islam declared, Salman minna ahl al-bayt. That Salman is from the family of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Look at Imam Bukhari rahmatullah alayhi. Imam Bukhari was not an Arab. He was from Bukhara. One of the former Russian states. You had Salahuddin al Ayyubi. Where was Salahuddin al Ayyubi from? Again, he wasn't an Arab. He was from Kurdistan, northern Iraq. You had Mulana Ilyas, Rahmatullah alayhi. How much he achieved? Yeah, he was somewhere from India. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when it comes to the deen of Allah, Allah doesn't look at the color of the faces. He doesn't look at who you are, where you are, and where you come from. Allah looks at the hearts. Every believer is dear to Allah. This is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives him the gift of Iman. Our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, إِنَّ اللَّهَ إِذَا أَحَبَّ عَبْدًا أَعْطَاهُ الْإِيمَانِ When Allah loves an individual, he gives him this gift of Iman. With this, my young friends, amongst the believers there are certain people who Allah gives His divine and special love. And this status cannot equal anything. There are people like you and me who will try our utmost best, our entire life, to become Allah's. And there are certain individuals who Allah Himself wants for Himself. And they receive the divine love. And with this divine love, they receive this thing called Qabuliyat. This thing called acceptance. Sayyidina Abu Hurairah radiallahu ta'ala relates that our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, إِنَّ اللَّهَ عَزَّ وَجَلْ إِذَا أَحَبَّ عَبْدًا دَعَى جِبْرَائِيلِ When Allah loves a person, He calls Jibra'il. And He says to Sayyidina Jibra'il alayhi salam, I love this person from today, I want you to love him also. Sayyidina Jibra'il begins to love him because Allah loves him. And then He makes a call within the heavens. And he tells all the inhabitants of the heavens in their zillions that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves so and so. You also love him. Then all those within the heavens begin to love that particular individual that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves. And then Allah, Prophet, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Then acceptance is placed for that individual in the land that the servants of Allah and the people begin to love that individual. 
Look at Sayyidina Umar Farooq radiyallahu ta'ala anhu. Look at where Sayyidina Umar Farooq radiyallahu ta'ala anhu was. And when the divine love and the acceptance came, look at where it took him. Sayyidina Umar Farooq radiyallahu ta'ala anhu, and I'm sure there's not a single person here that doesn't know this. He has in his hand the sword. And he has made firm intention, not only has he made firm intention, the sword is on shield, and he is making his way to our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu wasallam, that today he is going to put an end to Muhammad, he is going to put an end to Islam, and he is going to put an end to the Quran. When the divine love came, and with it came the qabuliyyat, the acceptance, this very man that had left his house to put an end of, to Islam, this was the man that Allah used as a means of guidance for millions to come thereafter. And so much was achieved in his era as a Khalif, which has never been achieved thereafter right to this very day. Look at Imam Bukhari rahmatullah alayhi. Imam Bukhari rahmatullah alayhi as a child was blind. He couldn't even see. What hope was there for a blind child around 1100 years ago? My friends, 1100 years ago, what hope was there for a blind child? It was as a result of this, you know, his mom would cry by day and by night. And she would beg for Allah's mercy and she would ask Allah, Ki Allah, I beg you, restore the eyesight of my son. You know, when the divine love came, and with it the qabuliyat, this very child was, that was born blind, that was blind in his youth, he was the one that became the Amir al muminin fil Hadith, the commander of the faithful with regards to the Hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa And in spite of the fact that there were many great scholars in his time and thereafter, and there were many scholars thereafter which compiled books that included only authentic hadith. You had the Sahih of Ibn Khuzayma. You had the Sahih of Ibn Hibban. You had the Mustadrak of Imam Hakim. You have the Muntaqa of Ibn Jarud. Yet his book, the Sahih of Bukhari, was the one that received this thing called Kabuliyat, received this thing called acceptance, as a result of which, from that day to this day, centuries have passed. But the Siwad al the greater part of this Ummah, has been benefiting from this book and this Sahih of Imam al-Bukhari in their millions, and will do so right till the day of judgment. Bishr ibn Hafi rahmatullah alayhi, was a man that could not even stand up straight due to intoxication. But when the divine love and acceptance came, such was the status of Bishr Afi, rahmatullah in the eyes of the people, that his name was like the name of a prophet. Just like the name of a prophet is on the tongue of every woman, every man, and every child. The name of Bishr Afi, rahmatullah in his era, was on the tongue of every woman, every man, and every child. You know, on one occasion he was asked, how did this come about? Very humbly he replied, Hada min fadlillah. This is from the grace of Allah. And then he said, You know, one day I was walking and I saw on the floor a piece of paper. And on this paper it had the name of Allah. This is a person that could not even walk straight due to intoxication. And today he's seen a paper on the floor with the name of Allah. He picked that piece of paper up and he cleaned it. Such was the respect that he showed to the name of Allah. Now today the Quran you see in the Haram that people just throw on the floor. They've got no time to pick up the Quran. You know, there will be you know, places allocated right in front of them. But such is the regard for the Quran that it's just like a normal book. But it's, it's degraded than a normal book. Because people of knowledge look after their chemistry books and their you know, mathematics books 
better than you see the believers looking after the book of Allah when you go to the haram. And here you have Bishr Habi rahmatullahi who saw the name of Allah on the floor and he couldn't tolerate this. He picked it off even though he was what he was. And he cleaned it. He says, at that time I only possessed two dirham, that's all I had. So I thought, let me go to the perfume seller. And he bought the best possible ithal that he could do so for two dirhams. And he perfumed this piece of paper. With love he took it home and he placed it on a high place out of respect for the name of Allah. He says, that very night I saw in my dream that the Lord of the Ars and Kursi was saying, O Bishr, we will, elevate, we will elevate, elevate your name in the dunya as well as the akhirah just because you took care of my name. You had Fudail ibn Ayaz. Fudail ibn Ayaz, for those of you that have studied history will know he was a notorious bandit of his time. People were so afraid of Fudail ibn Ayyad. Yet when the divine love came and the Qabuliyat, this same notorious bandit earned himself the title Abidul Haramain. Abidul Haramain. The worshipper of the two harams. One of those that received this special and divine love. And my friends, he received it in great abundance. And he received this thing called Qabuliyat in great abundance. And this was an individual just like those before him, whom Allah wanted. Whom Allah wanted to use to elevate his deen right till the day of judgment. And Allah did. This person was none other than the Imam of the believers and our Imam, Imam Abu Hanifa rahmatullahi alayhi. 1400 years have passed. From the Khair al Qurun to this very day, 1400 years have passed. And in spite of the fact that there were great scholars in his time and thereafter, and there were many schools of thought during his time and slightly after, 